kitchen developing a musical language through vowels and consonants? Like, like singers do. Except for violinists. You see, as all sounds have a beginning, middle, and end, using a vowel or a consonant to describe that beginning articulation could be an effective tool to help us to shape a phrase. So how did I decide to, to, to explore this, this, this out of the box world? Well, I, well, one summer I had decided I wanted to learn Robert Schumann's Dichtsliebe for A Poet's Love. And I decided that I would do this with a vocal coach who was a pianist. And so we worked on it. And it was really fascinating because I was trying really hard to emulate the sounds that the voice made when saying those words. Well, at the end of our exploration, I she asked me if if I would like to play it at a little house party she was doing on forte piano, and I said sure. Well, I did, but I didn't have the words in the program. I wanted to see if I could evoke that world those words just through the sounds that I made with my violin, with my bow. Well, it was successful, but afterwards, this, <laughs> the vocal instructor, professor at the local university in Nashville, George P. Valley College, well, he came up to me and he said, William, I have to tell you, I did not like what you did. But I must say that you played it like a singer. I was so happy with that. And that started my exploration into this, this idea of trying to create words with the violin. Well, looking at vowels and consonants, what do we have? Well, we've, we've got A, E, I, O, U. We've got the consonants, which, which you know. Well, well, can you imagine using vowels and consonants in the beginning of, say, Sasson's introduction in Rondo Capriccioso? You know, the... Let's see. How can we, what can we do? Hmm. First, let's explore a vowel. A, A, E, I. There's no articulation, no, no click at the beginning of the note. A, E, I, O, U, probably deeper. You know, which gets me to, to this, you know, if I want to make it lighter, I probably want to raise my two middle fingers. And if I want to make it deeper, like a U, I'm probably going to lower my two fingers. What about those consonants? Well, let's see. What about a K? Hmm. If I lower it a little bit, let the weight settle. Or an M, not so guttural, maybe. Okay, getting the idea? Let's see. If I want to do the sasson, 
Do I see that opening E as a vowel or a consonant? Hmm. Ooh, what if I put two together like an M with an A? Ma. Ma. Let's see. Ooh. And you know what I could do then with the F? Hmm. I could make it maybe a little, a little brighter with a fa. I'm going from ma to fa. A little lighter, brighter. So what am I doing? Well, I guess I'm organizing these sounds. Oh, I forgot. Hmm. Because if this is ma, what is ma? Me. I can start to really create phrases and I can build to go to the top of a phrase, to recede to the end of a phrase, all by using my vowels and consonants and matching them up. What about Zagat? If I were to, okay, I'm going to start with my fingers lower. Is it a Ka? Is it a W? Hmm. I think Ta is probably good. Ta. How about I bring my fingers a little together? You see, I'm exploring the different possibilities the different tonal possibilities to bring the music to life. And I'm using my vowels and consonants to help me organize it. So you see, this out of the box solution is very useful in helping us to understand that all notes are not played in an equal manner and that we can build using that starting point. That starting point could be vowels and consonants. <laughs>